Grace and peace. I'm Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Bible Study, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. And we have been looking at the good news. The gospel is good news for every person and every part of life. And this week we are examining the gospel and how it connects with Christmas. Appropriate timing for this part of the time of year. And how does the gospel story connect with the Christmas story? And there are these five question areas that we believe life revolves around. People are asking questions about relationships. Who loves me? Who should I love? How should I treat everybody? Lifestyle. What is the good life? What kind of life ought I be trying to have? Purpose. I have a limited amount of resources. How should I spend them? Belonging. Where do I fit in? Where can I call home and beliefs? Not only what is true, but who do I trust? And we have seen over the course of this term that these five areas intimately relate to the gospel. And we're going to use these five areas to draw out gospel truths from the Christmas story. How does the how does the Christmas story relate to the gospel? It can relate to the gospel in these five areas, relationships. Now, we see this idea of the gospel of how God created man, man separated from God through sin um, and destroyed the relationship there. Jesus Christ came. He originally came as a baby in the manger during Christmas time, eventually growing up and becoming the Christ on the cross as well. The the whole narrative starts with the Christmas story and then the resurrection and we hope for a future return. But that that idea of the gospel restores that broken relationship with God. And that's and the gospel really starts with Jesus's life and Jesus's life started in the Christmas time. But we want to see this. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, the God-man. Jesus, the incarnate Christ. Jesus, the Son of God, was born into a family. Now, if we believe God is all-powerful and can do just about anything, there are probably a thousand other ways the Son of God could have came to re-engage humanity. But Jesus was born into a family. Jesus had an earthly stepfather, Joseph. He had a birth mother, Mary. He ha eventually has brothers and sisters, well, brothers that we know of in Scripture. Jesus was born in a family. It is not good for man to be alone. And we know that sin has separated humanity from God, but we also see even in the very beginning, sin separating us from each other. And we are feeling alone, separated from God, separated from each other, this, this sin. But Jesus comes and has natural human relationships with others. He relates to people not just as God to the creation, but Jesus to Mary, Jesus to Peter. Jesus, the person, was born into a family. This restores and, and is a way to show that God still values the idea of the family. Jesus' birth into a family is a very important piece of how the gospel can even restore our relationships. It doesn't just restore our relationship with God. It can, being restored with God, can have an overflowing effect into our other relationships and teach us how not just to love God, but to love others, including our family members. Lifestyle. Jesus was born into the lower class. Jesus was born in a manger. Jesus was born in an inn, a cave out back of an inn because there was no room 
in the end, Jesus was born from parents outside of their normal home. Jesus was born into a Jewish family that was being ruled by the Romans. The gospel isn't about the rich and famous. The gospel isn't about making life better for those who are the, on the top tier of humanity. The gospel isn't about where we are and how we look and feel good through these things. The gospel, Jesus being born of lowly circumstances makes the gospel available to everyone. And not only that, but it it changes what we think the good life is. The Son of God had a life that included a lack of means, that included hard work, that included maybe some oppression of the Romans to the Jews, that included having middle class or lower middle class availability of things. This was perfectly fine for Jesus. How we ought to live our lives is not defined by class. The gospel shows us that some aspects of life are more important than just dividing it between the haves and have-nots. Jesus redeems all of humanity, including those who look like they are taking it on the chin by being less than others. Purpose. Now we can talk about Jesus's purpose. Jesus was born to save the world and he eventually grows into the knowledge of that. And we see at a very early age, 12 or 13, that Jesus knows who his father is and he is in his father's house. And we know that even at the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus knew his purpose. But what does that mean for us? I like to think of Mary and, and quite often, a lot of Baptist stuff is knee-jerk reaction from other denominations overreaching on some of some of the things taught about Mary, some of the things taught about Peter. But Mary was blessed by God like no other woman could have been in the history of humanity. And she was given the purpose to raise the Son of God. Um, and that is amazing. But this idea that Mary's purpose revolved around the gospel, Mary's purpose revolved around the gospel as it is incarnated in the person of Jesus who will eventually die for the sins of the world. Mary's purpose is that way. And as we look at our purpose in life, we can see that we should have a purpose that revolves around the gospel. But Mary's purpose was to be a mother. So she was able to have an entirely gospel-centered purpose by doing the completely normal thing of raising a child. I'm sure Mary probably did not do anything crazily different than when raising Jesus than, say, the mother in the house next to her. She was a normal mother, and through the actions of that normal mother, was completely devoted to the gospel by raising Jesus. We can be devoted to the gospel. The gospel can be our purpose inside of the normal vocations we have in our everyday lives. Belonging. Jesus, the Son of God, at Christmas time, became human. The God of the universe became human. The God of the universe understands what it means to be human. The God of the universe loves humanity so much that he took humanity upon himself in the flesh. There is nothing in this world besides sin that separates the human being from God. This, this world, as God intends it to be, 
we should be perfectly at home in this world, connected to God, feeling comfortable in our own human skin and flesh. If Jesus, the Son of God, the Christ, can become human, that means that it is perfectly okay to be human. Who you are as a human being is not the problem. Sin is the problem. And through Jesus Christ, that sin is able to be overcome, to be defeated. Beliefs. God's story is fulfilled. We see the angels proclaiming that this is what was being prophesied forever. God's story through Jesus Christ. That story we heard all through the Old Testament is now being fulfilled. And that faithfulness throughout millennia about the expectant Messiah now gives us hope for the restoration of all things, not just the redemption, but the restoration of all things. Through Christ, through the Christmas story, we see God stepping into time to fulfill the story. And in the next video, we will look closer at what it means for that story to be, that big God story to be fulfilled through Christmas. As always, there's two ways to join, live Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, via Zoom and these weekly wrap-ups. Also, I am all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, and YouTube. Those links are in the description below. Loved having this conversation with you. Hope to continue it soon.